Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Pyatt and welcome to my YouTube channel. My goal is to help as many martial artists as possible in their journey and study of Bujutsu, whether you are a complete beginner or an experienced martial artist. I do videos every Friday, so if you like and enjoy this video, don't forget to subscribe to get more just like it. This week we are going to look at the third kata in the Pinat series. Uh, it's part of our beginner breakdown series, looking at the absolute basic form of each of the Pinat katas. So, Pinan Sandan is the third form. In Shotokan, it's typically called Heian Sandan. Unlike Shodan and Nidan, where the names are sometimes switched and mixed around, typically this kata is fairly consistent. Uh, this kata, in terms of the sequence of the development of fighting that you're learning as you go through the Pinan series of kata, starts to bring you into a much closer range of your opponent. Starts to look at some basic grappling, some basic holding, some basic locking. Uh, and so that's what the applications tend to focus on. We're not going to look exclusively at applications in this video. It's going to focus purely on the absolute basics of the solo form for beginners who are just learning martial arts. So if you are doing a particular style, just remember, speak to your sensei about the personal variations that your style will have on different components of this. And find out the reasons why, because that's hopefully going to help you learn and understand the kata an awful lot better. Just like always guys, if you've got any questions or queries or comments, please don't forget to put them down below and I hope you enjoy the video. So, Pinan Sanda, starting from Yoidachi, when you look, and there is movement in this first move, right? I, I'm going to drop into Nekoashtar's cat stance. This foot is going to draw in, and the movement is from a position in my hip. So if you imagine my hip is here, I'm going to contract the body. So I'm just going to gain this amount of space. So from here, you look, and I come, hand from the hip, Sotoyuke, okay, right? Out of lock, I'm dropping, compressing my weight into the back leg. So I should drop here. Then I step up, feet go. Now some styles will drive forward, some will just come up to the back uh, the back foot. Both are fine. From here, come up, one, and then from there, two. Okay? So one, two, Three. Two important things with this move. Number one, try not to make it look like you're in a marching band. Right? And number two is make sure that the locking movements, as well as being away from your body, are clean. Don't rush them. So don't end up going and just missing the second, the second one out in favour of getting to the third move. So make sure one, two. So all the way through, rather than just missing that second move completely. Then from there, we repeat. The back foot moves, and look. I'm going to pivot, weight on this leg, into Sotoruki again, neck wash that cat sense, and then repeat. Step up, one, two. Look, and again, drop into that neck wash that. So you see Nekrashlach and Sotoruki three times here. So one, two, one, two. Look, drop, step through, nukte, okay, with four fingers and kiai at that point. Now, this next move is perhaps one of the biggest points of variation in this category because it's one of the kata's takui, or unique or special points. So, in the version that we practice, from here, the back foot comes across, we pivot, pull away, and go right down to here. Then turn, and come out in kibidachi, doing hammer fist, tetsui, back and right back, open the front foot, step through, and kiai on the second punch. So, one more time from this direction. So the back foot comes across, you're pulling away to here, make sure the body comes down rather than up in this particular version, and then turn in kibalachi, so the feet are square, tetsu, step through, chudan ski, front punch. Other versions of the kata will practice, say, Deliberately upright, folding the arm in, then 
putting the emphasis on the next two moves. Now who's right, now who's wrong, the applications are different. So again, like always, talk to your sensei about which application is which, what's the purpose of each variation. So after we've got past that sequence and we've got to here, the next move is the back foot comes up, then you turn slower on this particular move than the moves that have come previously. So in this direction, to here. Now, some styles will have the feet in the sulati, heels together, feet 45 degrees. Others will come feet together. Again, it's a stylistic difference. So from here, the elbows for us are slightly forward. The arms aren't resting, not like you're throwing a tantrum. They're just touching, elbows slightly forward, spine straight. And from there, the right hand falls back, step, block across, and back in, and then back. Now, there are two ways of doing the feet in this section. Either shikudach, shikudach, kiridach, or all three kiridach, okay? Again, different styles have different versions. Then we repeat the same technique again. Pull the elbow back, step through, block across using the hips, pull back in, and then back. And then the third one, pull back, step, block across, leave it out, tetsu, hand fist. Then step through, punch, and kia. From there, the last bit of the kata, we step forward and round. I'll show you from the side. We step forward, pivot, and come across. So think of elbowing. And punching. Not that that's the application, but think of that. Then look, move the foot across, and then on the other side, same, elbow, punch. Then look, at this point, the foot should be slightly wider than your dachi, so the foot comes in to here, nore, lift. So to show you in this direction, so we step and punch, step forward and around. And then across here, then back, right, eight, eight. So that's the basic order of Pinan Sanna, which is the third kata in the Pinan series. This kata focuses a lot on the use of nekwashtas, cat stance, has the characteristic turns, and really starts to engage the use of the hip, both in preparatory movements and then in the action of the block and also in transitions between techniques for example where you come through and you come across so really think about your hips and think about the low stances in this kata this kata shouldn't really be quite tall because a lot of the stances in there shikudach and the kwashtach are quite low stances really there's a lot of compression within this kata part of that should also be shown in those movements where you do come up so for example in the first move there's that distinction between the drop and then coming up, which is then represented in the applications, which can be things like breaking the arm or striking. In both cases, you want to get your effective mass into the technique, so you need to move that and show that in the kata. If you've got any questions about this kata, don't forget to put them below. You can watch our videos breaking down katas in the rest of the Pinan series by clicking the links here and clicking the links here. Don't forget as well that if you want to subscribe, click the button in the bottom right hand corner. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. See you next week.